Friday, September 13th, 2013. One ounce of silver is $24. One Bitcoin is $130. Peace News Now is brought to you in part by friends of WeUseCoins.com. Learn about Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. A tricky case of religious freedoms has readers scratching their heads over whether or not this is a case of peaceful resistance. You decide. A Muslim girl took a job with Abercrombie & Fitch, a store known for selling a particular image. They asked her not to wear a hijab, a Muslim head covering worn by some Muslim women while working in the store. Essentially, they argued that they want their employees to double as models for their clothes, and the headscarf look doesn't match their brand. The employee was let go because she insisted on wearing it anyway. Under the law, companies are required to honor religious culture. She filed a discrimination lawsuit against Abercrombie and won. But could it be that no one is deserving of congratulations here? Abercrombie, while despicable in this instance, has every right to terminate a working relationship for any reason, regardless of its morality. I'm not saying one should fire women for wearing hijabs, but in a free society, one has the right to do it. And if customers don't like it and find that practice despicable, then they can choose not to shop there. Instead, agents of the state have now been invoked to inflict penalties on employers who want to exercise freedom of choice, and now can't. If resistance involves the use of government force, can it be classified as peaceful resistance? A man recently won a lawsuit for religious freedom in which he asserted he has the right to wear a pasta strainer on his head for a driver's license picture. Muslims, should Abercrombie be forced to accept all all religious absurdities? Even employees who want to wear pasta strainers? Share your thoughts in the comments section of this video. This story brought to you by the Sons of Liberty Mint. Trade value for value with fine silver quarters from the Sons of Liberty Mint. Four quarters to a troy ounce. The most divisible, usable silver on the planet. Order some today at sonsoflibertymint.com. Here's another tricky one. A pastor in Florida wanted to burn 3,000 Korans in public as a demonstration of free speech in recognition of those who died in the September 11th attacks. Book burning is a despicable act, yes, but does he not have the right to do it? Apparently not, because he was stopped in his car and arrested for, get this, quote, transporting fuel. Who knew that was against the law? I guess all those gas tanks in cars have got to go. This is obviously a case of government targeting and squelching unwanted free speech. Do you believe in and free speech for everybody? or just those who say things you agree with. Speaking of free speech, Hillary Clinton offered a diatribe of psychobabble to a crowd in Philadelphia this week as the contemptible Jeb Bush awarded her the 2013 Liberty Medal. Past recipients include Nelson Mandela and Médecins Sans Frontières, leading Clinton to begin her speech, quote, I think there's been a mistake. The end of the speech was interrupted by free speech activists who shouted, Benghazi, 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 referring to last year attack on the U.S. Embassy in Libya, where four Americans were killed while Clinton was Secretary of State. Her response to legitimate questions regarding the cause of the attacks was, quote, What difference at this point does it make? This story brought to you by friends of blockchain.info. Store your bitcoins in the free online wallet at blockchain.info. This week, cherub-faced high schooler Andrew Williams was taken from his classroom and brought to jail thanks to one anonymous snitch and the preference of bureaucrats to exercise authority rather than morality. One of the school cops claimed he got an anonymous tip from another student that he smelled marijuana coming from Williams' car. The school got a warrant and searched it. They didn't find any drugs or pot, but they did find a three-inch pocket knife in the console. Andrew said that he knew the knife was in his car, that it was kept there in case he was involved in an accident and needed to cut off his seatbelt. The school cop put the high schooler in handcuffs and brought him to jail on a felony charge of carrying a weapon within a school safety zone. Welcome to the world of adulthood, Andrew. Just turned 18 and you're already facing up to 10 years in prison. Parents, if you love your children, don't give them to the government schools. Peace News Now is on the Next News Network and is brought to you in part by friends of WeUseCoins.com. I want you to share this episode, and if you enjoyed it, send Bitcoin to donate.peacenewsnow.com. I'm Derek J, reminding you that peace is the way.